seven gods decide to help a poor teenager who is killed by a thug. The teenager reincarnates as Cain Von Silford, the third son of the noble Von Silford family. He is now part of a fantasy world unlike anything on Earth. Cain accepts the gods' request to use the knowledge he gained in his previous life to help improve the world. He is made their apostle, and while he receives powerful blessings from the gods, he is unaware that his real task is to protect the world from an evil creature who has been forgotten and is about to awaken. After a Japanese teenager dies while saving two girls, he is reincarnated as Cain Von Silford, the three-year-old son of a noble family with all of his memories. He meets his mother Sarah, maid Sylvia, and older sister Rianne, as well as his father Garm. In addition, he meets Maria, Garm's first wife, and his much older half-brothers Jin and Alec. As a result of his sudden rise in intelligence, he is permitted to study and begins using magic in secret. He receives numerous lessons from Rianne. Two years later, Cain is ready to be baptized and learns that the Marineford faith has seven gods. During his baptism, each of the seven gods tells him that because he died doing a good deed, he will get blessings from them all. With their help, Cain realizes that he is now the strongest, smartest, and most skilled person alive. While Cain's family is overjoyed, they are concerned that governments may view him as a threat, so he conceals his powers. Cain makes the decision to become an adventurer at his baptism party so that he can help people all over the world. The gods reveal in secret that in order to avert a great evil, they need Cain to become the strongest living thing by his 16th birthday. Swordswoman Millie and elven magician Nina, hired by Garm as tutors, are D-rank adventurers Cain and Cain. They have trouble teaching him because Cain already has level 10 blessings from the gods of war and magic and is more skilled than Millie and Nina, who are level 3. He is only lacking in practical experience. So they take him to the wilderness, where he quickly learns every new spell Nina teaches him and easily hunts his first monsters. One of Cain's blessings grants him 100 times more experience points than usual, so hunting just a few monsters immediately propels him to skill level 8. When C-rank adventurer Cross makes fun of them for their babysitting quest, guild receptionist Ruddy gives Cain permission to hunt stronger monsters. Cain then beats Cross. Cain is 8 years old when Nina and Milla's employment contract expires, so Cain uses flashy magic to craft them valuable thank you gifts by hunting dangerous monsters. The gifts, magic bags that imitate Cain's item storage skill and are both useful and valuable, touch Millie and Nina. Later, Cain receives a lengthy lecture from Garm for frightening the people. Cain is now 10 and he has been on many adventures. He is taken to the royal capital as a noble to make his first public appearance. He kills monsters that were attacking a carriage carrying Lady Silk, the daughter of Duke Eric, and royal princess Telescha, who both fall in love with Cain. They insist that Cain share their carriage because they are also on their way to their debut. Overruling Garm's objections, the girls stop for the night and force Cain to sleep in their room every night for the week. Cain doesn't sleep all week because he is so anxious. Cain is able to bring Telesch's dead soldiers back to the capital upon reaching it, which earns him the gratitude of Vice Captain Dame. In spite of the objections of some nobles, particularly Marquis Corgino, King Rex, Telesch's father, promotes Cain to Baron and awards him with a mansion and ten platinum coins. Rex and Eric insist that Cain get engaged to both Silk and Telesch in private. Cain is the only man they can marry without scandal now that they share bedrooms. Cain agrees to the engagements under pressure from all sides. Eric and even Garm can freely lecture Cain about his scandalous and outrageous behavior because of the formalities surrounding Rex. Cain consults the gods about his levels, which are quickly approaching demigod status. However, the gods are also bored they ignore Cain's concerns and ask him to introduce Japanese entertainment to the world. Cain goes to Parma, a cat girl he has known since he was a kid who works at the store owned by her uncle Tamani. Through his trading firm, Tamani's agrees to produce a reversey board game. Their business deal is guaranteed for a period of three years by signing a contract before Panom, the god of commerce. Cain must pretend to meet Silk and Telesja for the first time at the debut ceremony because their engagements are still kept a secret. Rex is delighted when Cain presents him with an extravagant reversey board. Habit, the brash son of Marquis Corgino, tries to charm Silk, but she ignores him. Habit and his friends try to bully Cain with their level 1 magic spells, but they fail. Habit and his friends, mere Viscount's sons, are forced to bow and apologize after Silk. Fed up, reveals that Cain is a full baron. Rex and Eric overhear Silk and tell us to extort romantic dates from Cain in order to keep everything a secret. As a result, Cain is once more lectured by them about being a philanderer. Cain discovers when he visits his new mansion that it has been neglected and is in disrepair, however, 
He uses his magic to quickly clean and repair it. He employs Sylvia, three maids, and Colin, a butler. Kane pays his parents a visit, along with his older half-brothers Jin and Alec. Garm tells Kane to host a party for other nobles to celebrate his new baron title while he is showing them his mansion. Kane decides to give gifts of fine glassware, Japanese food, and alcohol. Despite the fact that royals rarely attend with Telestia, Rex insists on attending. Kane keeps a taxidermy calamity class red dragon as a trophy, which surprises the nobles. Both the alcohol and the glasses are particularly appealing to Rex. Marquis Corgino insults everyone, criticizes the food, and demands that all of the glassware be given to him as a gift when he arrives late. Before revealing Rex's presence, Kane gives him permission to do so. Rex is furious, and Corgino flees in shame. Rex, realizing that Kane used him as a pawn against Corgino, gives Kane a two-hour loud lecture on how a baron, son-in-law should treat a king, father-in-law. Kane does not escape either. Kane is invited to a knight's training session by Dame. Tijuana, a knight captain, an elvish viscountess, asks him to fight her. But when Kane wins, she proposes marriage and drags a confused Kane to talk about it with Rex. Tijuana is also the elvish princess, so Rex is furious. As long as Duke Layson, Tijuana's father, agrees, Rex must agree. Rex is concerned about Kane's growing power, so Magnus suggests they test him. Every day, Tijuana starts demanding duels, which also makes Kane's skills even better. Rex, Eric, Garm, Dame, and Magna summon Kane and present him with a magician's grimoire written by Yuya Esfort, the first king and ancestor of Rex. Rex's suspicions are confirmed by Kane's effortless reading of it in Japanese, Yuya's unknown language. Rex accepts Kane's insistence on keeping the fact that he is a Japan-born reincarnation blessed by all seven gods a secret. However, Kane is forced to admit that he is. Layson grants Tijuana permission to wed Kane. Rex is sure that Kane will be a good king of Esfort in the future. Kane is spared a lecture by Rex. Instead, Telestia and Silk tell him to be reckless and seduce every woman he meets. Kane joins the Adventurer's Guild when he is 12 years old. His G-rank license is issued by Secretary Resha. Resha is harmed by other adventurers, but a rank adventurer Claude scares them away. Claude tells Kane to go to a party but his wife Lena drags him away. Kane takes a job killing Goblin, but Tijuana finds him and wants to join him. Tijuana kills the Goblin and S while Kane fights green lizards nearby, stealing a quest from Millie and Nina unintentionally. Cedric, Vice Guildmaster, says that Kane lied about killing the lizards himself. Guildmaster Eden, Tijuana's older brother, saves Kane. Kane is promoted directly to a rank by Eden who is aware of his power and can give him the most dangerous missions. Now that he is aware that Kane is a baron, Cedric apologizes in a grovel. The gods are amused by this, but they need Kane to be even more powerful because the evil god Aaron will soon emerge to destroy the world. As a result, they come to the conclusion that he requires a teacher and has chosen just one. Telestia and Silk discover that Kane went on a date with Tijuana and force him to apologize. Kane shows up for the Royal Academy entrance exam. Kane accidentally destroys the magic safety barrier during the magic exam, and during the swordsmanship exam, he duels Claude to a draw. Kane is lectured by Rex for destroying the costly barrier and taking the exam for commoners when he was supposed to take the exam for nobles. Kane is required to deliver the welcome speech after learning that he received a perfect score. After Kane's speech at the entrance ceremony, Rex gives a speech in which he blatantly warns Kane not to cause any more trouble. Elka Kane chooses to study adventuring, magic, and magic items during homeroom with the instructor. Telus just selects internal affairs with the intention of managing Kane's noble domain, while Silk selects commerce with the intention of embarrassing Kane by managing his business affairs. Kane observes Habit attempting to coerce Parma into dropping out of school so he can claim her spot in a class. However, when Habit realizes that Parma is his childhood friend, he flees. When Parma and Telestia become friends, Kane is afraid he will be lectured soon. Kane is teleported away from the library by a man who knows that he is a reincarnation and that his original name was Shina Kazuya thanks to a psychic message. Yuya Hurasawa, also known as King Yuya Esfort, and his identity is revealed. Yuya reveals that he is the new god of creation for his own world, Fabnail. Eren may have connections to Kane's previous life, as Yuya has agreed to train him. He abandons Kane thousands of miles away in the wilderness, but he warns that monsters here are much tougher. In addition, time moves in different ways, so while Esfort will pass by quickly, Kane will have years of time. Kane saves a puppy from the Fenrir and gives it the name Haku. 
They have to survive for four years before they can return to Yuuya's house. Yuuya reveals that Eren was the god of entertainment, but that he had become corrupted and used death games to amuse himself by pitting kingdoms against one another. Yuuya also reveals that two other people, Seiya and Megumi, Kane's parents who were killed in a car accident, were with him when he reincarnated from Japan. They were killed fighting Eren, but they became Yuuya's dear friends. Kane is sent to the elf Durain to learn how to fight. Kane returns to Esfort with Haku and Durain's pet dragon Jin after defeating Durain after another year. For Rex, Yuuya gives him a sword. Kane finally sees Telestia and Silk after five years apart, but he is harshly lectured because, from their point of view, he had been gone for almost a week. Rex is shocked by Kane's story, but after seeing Yuuya's katana, he accepts that it is true and lets Kane keep it. Kane is reminded by Eric that he has not completed the bandit capture quest required to advance to a rank, and that the time limit has passed since he has not been seen for seven days. Millie and Nina, who had been escorting Sabino's, Parma's father and Tamani's brother, are also saved when Kane captures the bandits. Kane is now on a rank and a baron, shocking Nina and Millie. Kane meets Claude at the guild, and Claude tells Kane that Millie is his sister. Realizing that Kane is also a student at the academy, Claude, Lena, Millie, and Nina attend as guest lecturers to assist Kane. But they discover that Kane doesn't fit in at all with the other students. They fail spectacularly in their attempt to help Kane stand out and gain popularity. Baffled at Claude's ineptitude, Kane frenzies through the beast-filled woods, unexpectedly terrifying the realm into thinking a devil ruler has showed up and procuring his most serious talk yet from both Rex and Garm. Back in the forest, Kane's rampage causes a crystal to be thrown out of its hiding place, eaten by a dragon, and then taken over by a piece of Eren who has returned. The end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new anime recaps.